So those who are joining us this afternoon to uh, meet Tim, uh, Tim is the sales manager, uh, national sales manager, right, Tim? Correct, yeah, that's right. Yeah, national sales manager for international books. And he is going to talk about printing, printing process, and all of that stuff. I don't even want to try to describe what he's going to do, but uh, he's also going to show us a, a video along with it. Now, Tim, I believe you shouldn't have any problems sharing, but if you do, please let me know. You know what I'll do, if it's okay, let, let me share my screen right now. And this way, we'll know if it works or not. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Perfect. I'll bring this up here. Okay. So I'll be waiting for the video. Um, is it okay if I start now then, Eddie? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, yep. Good well, I thank everybody for coming. Um, Eddie told me that everybody's kind of muted. Uh, so I don't know if you heard what he said before. So e either way, however you guys want to um, uh, communicate to me, whether you want to do it after I do the, the tour, during the tour, you can stop me. This can be completely loose, if you will. Um, and if you guys want to, uh, you know, uh, wait till the end or, or send a chat in between, that can look, we can look at that after and we can kind of just go over anything you asked. Um, what I'd like to first do is kind of introduce myself and then the company. Uh, my name is Tim Knickerbocker. I'm the National Sales Manager for uh, Integrated Books International. I'll, I'll be calling it IBI through the course of this video. Um, and then I just, what we do, uh, we, if you're used to using Lightning Source or um, CreateSpace or uh, any kind of version of that, um, we, we kind of simulate what they do, but we've expanded on it too. Um, our client base up to this point has always been academic publishers. Um, and so we, we utilize a, a lot of that um, skill set that we, we earned and kind of went through with them as far as the quality of our books, the kind of books we, we produce. So I'll kind of touch on that as we go through this, uh, this video. So before I begin, I'd like to thank you all for letting me be part of this uh, conference. I'm excited to be here and hopefully you guys will uh, like what we're gonna show you here in the tour. So as we begin, you see the uh, the marquee here. Uh, it says Books International. Um, so that's the parent company. So everybody kind of knows. So Books International is a warehousing and fulfillment center that originally started about 35 years ago. And we added uh, the capability uh, of doing printing uh, as basically as a supplemental piece to the pick and pack business that they had. So about 17, 18 years ago, we added what I who I work for, Integrated Books International or IBI. Um, IBI can't, kind of came aboard, like I said, to kind of cover the pick and pack portion of it. So we would store books for, for authors and publishers. And as they their books were going through, if they needed additional uh, books for a, for a certain order, our company would just print that one book or two books to fulfill that order instead of waiting for the full 500 run or 400 run or 1,000 run to come in. And it would save time and get those books out to your customers a lot quicker. Um, in doing so, we, it, it kind of evolved and grew into what you guys know today as POD and what you guys probably use Lightning Source for. So then we became a direct order to us and we ship out directly uh, to the end user. We, we probably ship uh, about two to 300 books a day to Amazon. So some of the books that you guys think Amazon is, is producing for you, we might be producing because we have the files at our facility based on another publisher's um, need. And we're actually producing it, then putting it on an Amazon truck every day and shipping to them every day. So that's kind of a thing for you guys to kind of think about. Same thing with Ingram too. Lightning Source, if a book was set up with us originally at a, at a, uh, through a publisher, we would actually get that order, produce it, and put it on a truck to go to Ingram. And Ingram comes to our shop probably three times a week as well. So as we go through this, I want to kind of touch on all the different things we do, show you the equipment that we use to do this, um, and we can kind of go from there. So we broke this uh, tour down into a couple of different sections. The first one being uh, the, the text printing section. So uh, for me, just so you guys know, I actually came from manufacturing. So I, I ran uh, the print room, the bindery, pre-press, uh, customer service, a whole bunch of different areas, even shipping at one point. Uh, so for me, watching this uh, evolution of, of printing grow in the digital, at least on the digital platform, has been amazing, amazing thing for me to see. So this room we're actually in here, for me, is watching my little boy grow up. This was my, my room. Uh, it's about 2,500 square feet. Uh, we, we did everything in here, print the text, bind the books. We, we did uh, case bound books, hardcover, everything in this one, one little area. This is all the doing we're doing the one-off books and the POD, which we still do. 
Um, so we're going to be going out of this room into what we are now. You'll see this as we go through. We went from 2,500 square feet to 50,000 square feet. So it's kind of been a nice uh, evolution there. So this is the, the last remaining um, toner-based printers that we have on our floor. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar. We have toner-based and inkjet uh, printers, both sheet-fed and web. So this is the Canon Osage 6300. So this is a sheet-fed uh, printer. We have three of these actually on our floor here. And then we actually have two in our uh, Chicago distribution center um, as well. I just want to stop something right here before we want to be going through. Um, so the... The, the, what we have these machines on our floor right now, we have they're about they produce about 10 million pages a month. Uh, we run these 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. Uh, so this primarily handles all of our POD, which will be actually growing as time goes on. It's a black only printer, um, and it prints at about a 600 DPI, which is standard for what's out there now. Um, but we, we're going to be evolving from that, and I'll show you that in a little bit. This little sheet you're seeing here, this is our test sheet. So one of the things I wanted to kind of show you guys where we kind of set ourselves apart, I'm not sure if you've experienced this, but the quality of our books, the consistency of the printing of our books is so important to us. Um, so what we'll do is we have this test sheet and we have a master that we use. At the beginning of every shift, every, you know, every eight hour shift, our group will then pull out this test sheet, print one out before they start and compare it to that master sheet. As you're seeing here, there's screen values going left and right up and down, half tones. And if we were at the shop, actually, I'd open it up and show you there's solid blacks. There's all different font sizes and fonts itself to make sure nothing's breaking up, scratching, or leaving any marks. If our tech notices that, he'll actually stop the machine, clean up, or try to fix the belt or the wire and make it run um, properly. If he can't, he actually calls in service on that machine. So we do this at the beginning of every shift, or if there's any maintenance done to the machine, we do it again just to make sure. If there's any upgrades done to the machine, we actually print a new master and we use that going forward as the, the new standard, if you will. Now, every machine you see on this floor, we do this for at the beginning of every shift, whether it's toner-based machines, inkjet machines, or black and white, or color. We do it for every single one. As we move outside to this next uh, machine, so this is the Canon OSA i300. So this right here is a... Uh, inkjet based machine. It is also sheet fed. It actually prints at the same capacity as that OSE you saw previously. Um, it prints at uh, about 10 million pages a month, and, but this one does also black and white and color. Uh, we don't have any uh, images coming off of this for a couple different reasons. One is in the next week and a half, we're going to be upgrading this machine from that uh, i300 to the uh, i300iX. So what that means is it's going to be upgrading from a 600 DPI, which you saw previously on that past machine, to a 1200 DPI. And once we do this evolution to this of this machine here, we're going to actually add three more of these machines to our floor between now and the beginning of the year. The reason why we're doing that is we're converting all of our machines so nothing on our floor will have a less than 1200 DPI output. Um, if you're doing straight text, it's you probably you know, not going to notice it as much, but anytime you do any halftone images, if you're doing anything with color, color images, for some of the uh, different uh, people on the video today, we've done some books for you guys on, the, on these different machines, and they can kind of see the quality of what we're producing uh, as we're going through. Because I said all of these books are sheet fed, they, they're printed either two up or four up, and then we'll cut those book blocks down and separate them as they're going through. So now we're going to be going into the bigger portion of the room, as you're seeing right here. So this is a uh, part of that 50,000 square foot upgrade we did. So this is the HP T240 uh, press. I'm not sure if you guys are, know this machine or not. So this is an inkjet based machine. Uh, it's web based. So it's a 22 inch web. It can print about 75 million pages a month, which is incredible. It does both black and white and color off this machine, as you see the, the images coming off of here. Now, the beauty of this machine is we can do a straight black and white job for you or a straight color job for you, but we do this other thing called scattered color. So if you're unaware what that is, what that is, we're able to actually print color pages uh, as long as it's on the same paper stock and print that anywhere within the book. And the nice thing about that is how we charge. So we actually charge for a black and white book for the whole thing, and then we just upcharge you between a penny and a half to two cents a page for color. So a lot of the university presses that we work for, uh, they've definitely grabbed onto this, uh, this new way of printing because uh, they can add in basically five to six color pages sprinkled throughout the whole book and only have a unit cost you know, jump of about seven, seven cents to 10 cents a book. Um, so they, they really like this, this, this capability. Tim, what's the DPI on that? This is a 1200 DPI as well. Uh, when we when we upgrade, there's a there's a uh, well there's a uh, upgrade to it. We can do it's called high definition. If we do high definition mode, that's a, that's a 1200 DPI. 
So you definitely can in increase the, the printout and print capacity on that too, um, depending on what you're looking for. How does that compare to the, some of your uh, Canon or HP machines? This machine here, because of it being a, a web-based press, it, it has a little bit of a different uh, look to it. So when I say that, meaning it has more of an offset look. So the images are a little softer, if you will, how they lay under the sheet. They kind of set into the paper a little bit more, like an offset uh, printing will, will be. Uh, whereas the Canon or the Indigo, which we printed your books on, John, um, yeah. have a lot more, there's a, there's a, I'm going to call it pop because of the, because of the way the, the toner prints. Yeah. Um, the, be the beautiful thing about that I-300 is... Um, that indigo that you saw, we did your book on, obviously it's a little more expensive because of the quality of it. Uh, that I-300, the samples I've seen are almost identical to the indigo. But mm -hmm. the beauty of it is you're gonna be paying a half the price for the print, print page. So that's a nice thing to have too as well. Um, these machines are web-based. So when the uh, book blocks come out on the other side, they won't be individual uh, sheets like they were out the sheet bed. They'll be actually signatures like you've seen off an offset press. Um, we have different uh, signature builds, if you will. So there's an eight page SIG, a 12 page SIG and a 16 page SIG, depending on your trim size. Um, if anybody wants to know what the formulas are for that breakdown, absolutely email me after this um, or email any questions you have actually. And I can get you those formulas so you guys can see. So what does that mean for you? If you're being doing digital now, you're not used to seeing blank pages in the back, but if you've ever print offset before, there'll be some blank uh, sheets in the back. Uh, this will, this is gonna have to be something you'll have to get used to because of the setup of these books. Um, but we have a way of kicking out X amount of blank pages. So if you did the math on something, let's say it said it was gonna be 10 blank pages in the back, you're kind of going, wow, 10 big pages. Um, our system will let us get rid of uh, or say get down to uh, three sheets or six blank pages. So the most you'll ever have in the back of your uh, uh, book here, if you're using our webs, is three blank sheets. This is the biggest machine on our floor. So when you're talking digital, there's only three of these in the United States right now. Um, so this is the HP T490 with Sigma folder. If you've been to an offset press or never been to an offset press, a 42 inch press is probably one of the biggest presses you can print offset on. This digital printer is that size. As you were walking through this press, you can see it's, it's immense size here because how long the room is. Um, this machine is a monster. So this machine can print about 375 million pages a month. So what does that mean for you? That would mean uh, your average 280 page book, we can, we can print about a million of those a unit, a million units of that off this machine a month. So you can get quite a bit of, uh, of books off this off this machine. Can you sell them too? Can we, <laughs> we, could, we could try, we could try. We have different divisions of our company, which I could talk about in a little bit that can maybe hopefully help you guys with that too as well. Um, so this machine, uh, like I said, can print very quickly, but here's the beauty of what we try to do. Because our mindset has always been short run POD at the very beginning, we try to push that philosophy and that, that thought process on all of our equipment. For the size of this machine, as you're seeing here, and then the way it's printing right now, um, we actually have a program called Conics. So Conics is a front-end program that allows us to stage and organize and, and process all the all the, uh, the files that we're sending to this press. So we can send a day's worth of printing here. It'll actually organize it by trim size, by paper type, right, and, and, and by publisher too, if we if we have to, and set the machine up for us that way. So at the beginning of the day, the operators have to look and say, okay, I'm putting cream paper on first, and he runs all his cream jobs all in a shot, in one shot, switches off, then puts opaque on, runs all of that, pulls off, runs matte jobs, whatever he has done, he runs it through the day. So what does that mean? We can run POD work on a 40 inch uh, press at amazing speeds. So what you saw before, those sheet fed machines that we use, what normally takes us about 24 hours to, to print on those machines there, we can print on this machine in two hours. So we take that technology and, and use it here to maximize our output. The reason why we're doing that is we see so many jobs moving to POD. We wanna increase our capacity to get those books out. That's the first thing. The second thing is our goal is to always try to create a book that when we do it the first time for you, whether we're running a 500 run or a 200 run, and we get down to that POD level, the book looks the same. It doesn't change. So you'll never have to hear, well, what happened to my book when I switched? Sometimes people who use offset, I'm not sure if you guys are doing that currently, and then you switch to digital, what you'll, what you'll hear sometimes is, hey, the book looks completely different. Why did that happen? You won't get that with us. It'll stay the same all the way through. We're gonna show you guys in a little bit too. We have a barcoding system. So we actually print 
uh, barcode on every single page of these books. And throughout this machine, it's reading that. And that allows us to kind of watch the, the type that's printing, how it's printing, you know, is there too much density on this, you know, adjust it accordingly. It also allows us to track the jobs. So as these jobs finish, here's one of the barcode readers at the end here. It actually reads the job when it completes and lets us know that that job's completed. Another thing to do, to do is if you're looking at these signature books that we're doing even off this machine here too as well, you're gonna see that that signature actually comes off. There's no folding and gathering. When it folds down, it actually is a complete book. So we're actually printing page one, two, three, four, five, six, all in sequence throughout that whole entire run. There's no printing it, putting the SIGs aside and mirroring the SIGs together later. That saves us about a week in, in the schedule too as well. The next portion of the printers we're gonna show you guys now um, is our, our cover printers. Uh, we have three of those on our floor. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are used to digital printers or not. Uh, the, we have two Indigos. We have the Indigo 7800, and then we also have the Indigo 12000, which are showing you here. Uh, they're both beautiful, beautiful machines. They do an amazing job when it comes to printing. The difference between the two is one's a, 12, a 13 by 19 inch sheet, and the 12000 is a 21 by 30 inch sheet. Uh, that allowed us to get more covers on one sheet to allow us to be more competitive against offset. The reason why we love these machines, and if we were at the uh, plant right now and giving you the tour, I'd actually take a couple of the canisters out that we use for the toner in, in this machine. And if I shook it in, in the uh, canister, it actually looks like liquid. It's so fine. Those, those little beads that are in there for the toner uh, are purposely set to be that, that fine so that when it lays down, you get beautiful, crisp, and actually no banding when this... Uh, cover prints. As these covers are coming out here, try to stop it so you guys can kind of see. Um, usually when you're doing black or any kind of solid colors uh, right here, you'll get these little fine lines you'll notice throughout the run. Uh, what, what that's from is the, the, way the, tone, the way the toner and the way the processor lays down the image on that sheet. This machine, because it's a complete drum, there's no like line laying down the image. And that's what would cause those lines you'd see going through here it actually does the full surface color all in one shot. So black is laid down, the magenta is laid down, the cyan is laid down, all, all in one sequence. So that's why you get these beautiful crisp uh, images. This is also a 1200 DPI output. And this is the press we actually did John's uh, book on. It, it does a great, amazing job as far as how it lays, lays all the images down. As you're seeing, we're doing a two, color, two, uh, two up cover on this. Is that's another thing that helped us kind of bring our price down. This is the Meteor. So this is a brand new machine, probably installed it about six months ago. Um, I secretly love this machine. A uh, couple of different reasons. One, it, uh, it can do a 40 inch long uh, printable area, which we do all our jackets on, but we're able to do this unique thing on this thing called printed foil. So we do a lot of academic books. So that means a lot of stamping and we do traditional stamping as well with real dyes and we can do that as well. But this machine actually allows us to take rainbow stock and with this special toner we have, as you see this toner that's been laid down on this cover, when it goes through, we can actually fuse real foil, as you're gonna see it come out here, to the, to, the, to the cover. So we can create a case bound book that looks just like it's stamped, right? At a fraction of the cost because there's no dyes to be made right and there's no make ready setup on the on the machine how has this helped us it's helped us because uh, academically uh stamping it's just you know if you're doing an academic book it's kind of a key thing especially with jackets um they they've always had a need for this this allows us to go down to one copy of a stamp That's case book so this has definitely helped us uh kind of move that forward um so we can do a bunch of different things we, we offer about nine different stocks as far as colors go we offer about 13 different color foils as this uh, cover's going through now, I'll kind of show you. So there's another stock here and another uh, image being laid down. So just like you said, we can do the spine and the face and even the, uh, the back if needed. The other bonus we, we found out as we started to do this, because everything's being done digitally, the images are laid down that way. You're gonna get these fine lines in the, in the layouts and even down here in this small little font here, you can actually see that same line set up here that were, that were laid out in the, in the font. You actually will see that in this foil layout. Why? Because there's no dye. We were dye stamping it. It would probably press this out and these would probably be filled in. This has actually expanded a lot of designers thought process here. We're doing a book right now for a publisher where they were gonna do this thing on trees. It looks beautiful. There's this actual tree with all the branches coming out, all the leaves, and you can see all that detail. And they did it with a gold, uh, so with a green uh, stamping. It looks, it looks, looks amazing. So then as we move now to our manufacturing side, um, there's different avenues that we can kind of cover for you guys here. So we, we break everything down to two different uh, setups. We have POD binding, and then we're gonna have core binding. 
Um, on the POD side, that's everything that's ultra short run, 25, 50 copies, all the way down to one-off copies. And we do roughly, gosh, I want to say about 3,000 to 4,000 units uh, a night uh, POD, you know, seven days a week. So that's what we're kind of producing currently. Um, if you look right here, that's the barcode I was talking about right here. Every piece of information about your book is in that barcode. Your, the author, the title, how many pages are supposed to be in the book, uh, the paper type it's supposed to be, the trim size. Um, we use that to do a couple of different things. One is to follow the job through with the printing process. And if you see this going through here, that flash you just saw, that's actually setting up the machine. So the machine auto sets up based on that barcode. So this binder that we put this on, we actually will scan the cover too as well. It's kind of a double feature we get with that cover. It'll actually read that and set up the back end of the, of, of the machine for the, for the cover, but it also works as a uh, double check. If they put the wrong covers in, because they'll sometimes run multiple different covers in there along with multiple feeds of books, it'll actually stop the machine and won't allow them to, to put the wrong book in the wrong cover. So it's another, it's another double check for us too as well. This Vario binder we're running right here runs at about uh, 1,500 an hour for running all the same book and about 800 an hour for running each individual. It's a four pocket binder. And each pocket can be auto set up. So they can be reading it and putting it in and feeding it. So they can be running an eight and a half by 11 book with a half inch bulk and then feed a six by nine book with a quarter inch bulk, one after another. This machine allows us to do both PUR and EVA binding. And it can do both uh, paperback and case bound. Um, just as, as I'm saying it now. So PUR and EVA, if you're not familiar with those are, uh, EVA binding is, a hot melt. So it's just like any traditional paperback book you've seen for the last 80 years is, is bound with EVA. Um, but PUR is a different kind of process. So, uh, so if you will, EVA kind of goes into a book and kind of gets glued in and kind of penetrates this way. The reason why it does that, it, it sets within 10 seconds and the book is done. It's strong, it's durable, everybody loves it. It's been around forever. PUR is a little different. PUR is more of a, it's a polyurethane glue. And what it does, is it kind of co goes in crosswalls. The reason why it does that is it has to cure so it takes about 24 hours, but when it does, it has flex. So that book will actually lay flatter when you use PUR, and it's unbelievably strong. Um, we use it a lot for all of our coded stock jobs. If you had a job that had color inserts in it, we would use it for that. Any book that's over an inch and a quarter thick, we'll use PUR for it too as well. Um, and even the really thin books. So if you do a book that's, that's smaller than a quarter of an inch, we'll use PUR for that just to give it that extra strength. You can always request PUR too for any book we're doing for you. So after these books bind, they're going to go into a staging area over here where they put, put them with their, uh, their batched orders. Then they'll move over here to the, 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 the trimmer. So this is the infra trimmer. So this is also an, an auto setup, multiple make ready machine. So you can have all different unique sizes running through it. They're feeding in right now, all, all like sizes. So this can cut same, same speed, about 1500 an hour like sizes and 800 an hour if it's doing uh, individual sizes. Um, as we're feeding all these things in here, if you look over in this corner here, you'll see that flash. That flash you're seeing is the same when you saw the other machine. So it's reading that barcode and it's setting up those different trim sizes. As you can see, each one's a different trim size. As this book is feeding through, it's going through and that those arms are grabbing it. One arm is grabbing it, cutting the face cut, then it shifts it over to the next cut. It cuts the head and foot all, all in sequence. And as these books come out of these this back end here, they're going to go to the operator who then check it. And just to make sure you know, all your books are cut, cut correctly, you know, everything's nice and clean, no markings on the back. Uh, and they'll even fan through and make sure your books are, are they look good on the inside too as well from the binding. This is our ODM casing inline. It's a single wing casing inline. Uh, we use it primarily for all of our POD and uh, auto, st auto stock and short run books. Uh, but it's also a backup to our big casing inline. Um, as these books are getting fed in here, uh, this is our building line. So it actually puts the hinge and the joint into the case bound book. Um, a lot of times when some of the guys do POD, they'll just kind of press on the case and it's basically a hardcover case pressed onto a paperback book, and that's what you get at the end. We actually build, it's a, it's a four hit process. It actually builds that joint into that book so that even our POD books will feel and look just like a first run uh, case bound book. As you're going through here. So this next section is the section that we would do all of what we call core binding. So this is all the longer run, 100 copies and, and higher would go through this, this unit here. So this is our Colvis casing in, uh, case binder um, in three knife trimmer. So this is a, a 26 pocket binder. It can run about 6,000 books an hour. Uh, but as, as it's feeding through, I want to kind of show you guys, even this machine 
has POD capability. So it's just going up there. There's that barcode reader. So we can do about 1,500 to 2,000 books an hour, individual books. Each one of those 26 pocket binders can be adjusted and changed as it's going through. So we use this primarily for all of our longer runs uh, as it's going through. This machine does offer both PUR and EVA, just like the, uh, the POD machine does too as well. And as you can kind of see the theme here, everything we do, we try to offer all the same kind of uh, setups uh, throughout the whole book, whether you're doing one off or multiple copies. Um, we also do case bounding on this machine. If uh, we were at the shop, I'd love to show you guys this too. This, this machine right here, this is what puts the center strip on for the, uh, for the cases. And if you did a case bound book somewhere else, you could tear, <coughs> sorry, tear the cover off. Uh, you know, I know people don't want to do that, but if you did that, you looked at your spine, you either notice it's a, it is just a, looks like a paperback book glued onto uh, to the, to the book block, or <clears throat> it'll look like craft. Uh, glued onto the back. The craft you see there, that's standard, traditional. Most binders use that. It's strong. It's durable. It does it does a great job. But we kind of upgraded ours. So this right here is is more of a mesh. So if you're at the shop, I would show you. You put your thumb in it. And if you pushed, it actually would conform to your thumb. And the reason why we do that is it gives our case bound books a lot more flexibility. So they'll lay a little flatter, and it gives a lot more strength. We, we do have a ten, uh, publishers that ask to be, have their sp spines rounded. So we have to have the capability to handle that round. If you try to round one of those crafts or those paperback bound case bound books, it would just blister and crack that spine. You wouldn't see it because it's covered by the case, but inside the integrity of that book is it lost a lot of its durability. This will actually hold that durability for you as it's going through. So as these books get bound, uh, they're gonna kind of come through this conveyor. This is a little different setup. It's actually gonna run in line with our three length trimmer. Um, this three knife trimmer, obviously can handle that, that larger speed. It's a much faster three knife trimmer, um, but it also has the same setup as the other ones. As you're seeing right here, there's that barcode reader again. It can read that uh, the, the books as they're going through. And it, just so you know, the way that this machine set up, it actually separates the, the, the cuts. So if, you've, if you're used to seeing a three knife trimmer before, the book block actually goes in, it cuts the face cut, head and foot, and discharges the book. This actually, machine actually separated that function. It's cutting the face cut in one stroke, then it pushes it in and cuts the head and foot cut in another stroke. The reason why we do that is we could be cutting the face cut at eight and a half. It could be pushing in and cutting six by nine for the other cut and then moving out. So it's always finishing its last cut. That allows us to do POD books on this machine. And this machine can do about 2,000, 3,000 uh, individual unique books throughout the run as it's going through. So here's the books, stroke, the books are stroking through. We're gonna come through this area here. And then we have an inspector in the back. And here, as you're seeing, and they're checking, the, they'll check the books and make sure the quality is okay before they put them into the, uh, the carts. Case making. So we, we do do both paperback and case bound books. And this case maker we use, utilize for, for, primarily for all of our longer runs. So basically again, the 300 copies and up. We don't have any video on the, um, the POD case maker, but we do have two of those on our floor. That's more of a manual process. They actually read a barcode. It automatically sets the machine up, they place the cover, and they kind of hand feed in the, the board and the center strip as it's going through. This is a little different. <clears throat> this is a more of an automated feature. So the, cut, the board's being fed through here and kind of making the cases as it goes through. We do offer both 98 uh, and 88 point board. So we do have thicker board if you, if you guys had, uh, have a need for that. <clears throat> we can do both landscape and portrait too for all of our cases in, in all of our books. So this is our casing inline as we're finishing up our final things here. I want to just pause it real quick while we have a chance to show you. So this book block's pretty, pretty thick. And uh, just so you guys have an idea of our, our specs. So we can go as thin as an eighth of an inch thick. We actually, we just bound a book for somebody that was 18 pages, uh, a kid's book. So you guys can kind of know that. As far as how thick we can go, as you can see here, we can go just a hair bit under two and a half inches. We can go basically two and three eighths plus 30 second as far as our thickness goes. And paper wise, we have papers that are as, as thick as, you know, 300, 360 uh, PPI to as thin as uh, 1,024 PPI. So we, we have a nice range of papers as we go through that. And so we, we offer both cream, white, you know, coated stocks, uncoated stocks as far as papers go. So again, if you need to have that information too, or I can give it to Eddie to post on your, um, on, on his uh, website, so you guys can see the different papers we offer. I can put that up for you guys too in components. So these books are feeding through. The other thing I want you guys to consider too is our trim sizes. We can go as small as four by five, and then we can also go as, as thick as a nine, uh, sorry, as big as nine by 12. And we can do that both in portrait and landscape. So we do offer that. So as these books are being fed through here, this publisher kind of utilize a lot of our different capacities here. This is like a 50 run or, or 70 run. 
we were able to take a really thick book for them. Uh, we're gonna, we routed this book. You'll see that in a second here. We're applying glue for the uh, headbands. And we offer about 12 different color headbands on our floor. It's an eight wing casing inline that's being fed through here. As that book is kind of going through, you can see the nice round we have in there. Not sure if you guys need books rounded. Again, this is more of a, a traditional academic kind of style or um, your traditional European style. They, they love the round, so we'll do that as well. So this book also is one of those uh, printed foil books. So the client was able to take a book that was actually, actually the trim size this was, I think it was pretty small. It was like a five by seven. And so do a really thick one, but then give it the same look uh, of a stamp case book. So they definitely got to utilize every aspect of what we offer with our new technologies. One of the things we, we get asked about a lot is uh, the quality control and how you do that, especially for new clients when they're coming aboard. Um, so what I want to show you is, as this inspector is going to go through this book, um, each section of our plant has uh, these in this ticket here, has these tickets and each ticket has all the details of your job. And they have a little checklist that they, they go through and they inspect and in, when, they, when they're doing each job. Now this inspector will go through at the end of a run, do this too in the POD section too as well. And they'll grab books sporadically and kind of do the same check. But if it's a core job like they are now, they'll actually go and sporadically grab five to 10 jobs throughout the, uh, the run, bring it back to the inspection area. So before this job can actually be pushed to, to, uh, to completion for packing, they're gonna go through the book. She's gonna check to make sure the jacket is on the right uh, book. She'll check the, uh, the binding. In this case, she's checking the case binding, make sure the hinge is nice and tight in that book. So use that ticket to check all the specs that you asked for, your head margins and your gutter to make sure all those things are accurate and correct. They'll do a page up on your book to make sure that all the pages are consistent and we're not missing any pages throughout the run. And then she'll, in this particular case here, when she's looking through this paperback book, what we're trying to showcase is this, uh, cover she just flipped over if you guys asked for and for john he was he was very particular about let's make sure we check the quality of, of his run so we actually anything you approve whether we send one to you and you approve it on the first run or you, uh, you approve a second proof as it goes through we keep a copy of that hard copy and it follows the run throughout the job so this is the cover we actually have a copy of the text too so when they go to print each section they're going to compare that and make sure it's right so this inspector is actually checking after the process just to make sure everybody did their job and she checked it right so she did that. She's going to go through now and make sure the ISBNs match so we don't we didn't put the wrong cover on the wrong book. And she probably already checked this one here, but same thing. There's another cover there for you too as well. And as she's fanning through, she'll check for the half tones and look at that portion of the book. Another thing I want you guys to keep, keep in mind too is if you guys don't do proofs, hard proofs, and you ask for a soft proof, which would be a digital proof we email to you to check, we actually still print out a hard copy of that and that still follows the job all the way through. So we do do that as well to kind of keep that um, consistency and make sure the books are, are good as they go through. So that section we just saw right there kind of handles the manufacturing side. We're going to we'll go into now, which is the, the, the warehousing side. So this is the packing section. So just so you guys kind of know, so our, our company originally as it started out and just still, it's still doing very, very well, um, is our warehousing side. So our warehouse is uh, roughly about 250 to 275,000 square feet. It's four buildings that we have that, that make up that that way, those warehouses, and we handle a lot of different functions in there. We do, we could do warehousing for you guys if you have books that you, you produce and you want us to store the books and not have them going back to your house or your, or your warehouses, wherever they're being stored. We can store them at our facility and we charge roughly about a penny, a penny a book a month for each book that we keep here. And then with that storage, then we can pick the books as you get orders and then, and then fulfill them. And this is how that would happen here. So this particular case, as these books are going uh, through, <clears throat> you'll get orders that you'll process and send to us. We use double wall cartons and we use bubble wrap to, to really protect your books and keep them uh, safe in their, in their shit. What they're doing is they're scanning these book blocks on the, on the barcodes here. And this is another one getting scanned after we picked your order or we produced your order. So you can have multiple books being sent to the same uh, area like if they were going all to Amazon or to Ingram, we could be tailing that here. So what they'll do is as these books are going in and being packed before they start, they'll scan a ticket and when that ticket's scanned, it, it, it'll populate these screens here. All this information you see on the screen is all the books that are going to have to be put into this order. So as they're scanning these books, they transfer over to this area. If they, if at, by the end of the thing, if they go to scan a book and it's the wrong book, the machine will actually put up a warning and tell them they, they actually grabbed the wrong book. So there's no way for us to make that mistake and pack the wrong book in there. After we complete uh, an order, if there's books left over in this 
order. We are not allowed to complete that order. So we can't actually push it into shipping. It won't allow us to, to create the, uh, the next documentation to go forward. So we have to actually go back and pick it. So there's no chance for us to miss a book that's supposed to be put into your packing as we're going through. These little stickers here, they're called license plates and I'll show you that in a second. After that order is completed, they'll actually scan the license plate saying that it's completed and they'll apply that to the carton. And then that'll actually go follow the job through in that point too as well. And I'll show you what that does as it's going through. So the next piece I'm gonna show you here is the actual warehouse. So you guys can kind of see um, this. So this is one of our warehouses. We, we have about 65 different publishers that we warehouse for currently. And we store all of their books in this area. So as these books are being held, if you had an order for us, we would actually, they have a location as you're seeing there, we would actually go for the picker would actually have it on his uh, iPad that he'd go through, he'd go to that area and he would grab all your orders and the various locations that they're located and, and, and consolidate it to one packing. The nice thing about when we do this too is it actually generates a, uh, an estimated weight for every book that we put in a carton. And then as we fill, finish a carton, it generates an estimated weight, estimated weight for that carton. And then when we put it on a pallet, it actually generates an estimated weight for that pallet. The reason why we do that is when we go to finalize an order, if by chance it tells us the estimated weight is supposed to be hypothetically 75 pounds, and if we come in, we're at 100 pounds, the system will actually say, you're overweight, please check the order. It'll allow us to stop and say, did we put an extra carton on here that didn't need to be there? On the same token, it'll actually stop us if we're under, if we're supposed to be 75 and it runs, rings in at 50, it'll say you're missing uh, books based on what we said we we're supposed to scan. It's another double check that we have in, in the system too to avoid any missing packages. So after those books are all packaged and picked and they're packed up to go, they're gonna go to our shipping area. So as they move to the shipping area here, they'll come through this, air, this, this section here. And I'm gonna pause in a second to kind of show you guys. So that license plate we talked about, which is right here, we, we place on this book. Once that book is, is complete, just like those barcodes you saw in all of our books, that everything that's inside this carton is, is in this uh, barcode. So we know exactly what we packed, where it's going and how it's gonna get there. So as it's being uh, sent through now, it's gonna either be pulled off to put different areas. If this is gonna be shipped directly from our facility, those barcodes uh, serve another feature. It's gonna read that barcode and it's gonna label each carton as it's going through automatically. That allows us to not and avoid mislabeling a carton too as well. So that can't actually happen through our facility. It'll then go to these holding areas here. Will it be discharged? Whether they're going to FedEx, UPS to a direct ship for you guys, or if they're going to Ingram or, or Amazon or Baker and Taylor, I'm not sure who you guys use for your different warehouses. It would go to, it would go to the, those areas too as well. They get finalized, packed in, onto these skids and they get held to their, uh, the appropriate batch shipment day. And they'll go out that way there too as well. So um, that's just kind of a quick look at all the different uh, aspects we offer for uh, manufacturing. Uh, so before I go into some of the other uh, things we offer too, uh, I don't have any video on that, but I was just gonna talk about that. I just wanted to open up the floor to see, does anybody have any questions on the manufacturing things that I, that I showed you guys? I have one yes. for you, Tim. So <clears throat> when, when you're doing the pack and ship, mm -hmm. you, you showed in that demonstration where you're doing cartons, Correct. but what about the POD side of it? What happens yeah. if, if I have, if I set up with you, you know, one of my titles, mm -hmm. I get an order from my website and it's a one-off. Right. You guys handle that stuff too. Absolutely. That's a good question. Yeah. So we don't have any video on that. So those, those go to a different uh, area of the warehouse. So all the individuals will get brought into this different, the different section. Same process happens there. They actually scan the ticket, they scan the barcode, and that will generate a, uh, a shipping label, if you will. Those books will be put into this corrugated uh, packing uh, setup. So uh, if I could show it to you, I, I don't have any on me right now. Um, so the book would actually go in, it, 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 the machine automatically packages it, wraps this corrugated around both sides, and then pressure seals it. And then it cuts it off at the end. And then that label is then applied uh, automatically through the, through the system. So that we, we do do one-offs. The corrugated can go up to three, uh, just so you know, three books in one package. So we can go that, that as far as that thick. So we can do one-off through that same system or we can use um, that, the corrugated for that too as well. Okay. Um, if you need books put in an actual carton, we do offer just the individual single box carton too, too as well. So there's that too, we can, we can offer you that. Um, our pricing set up just so you go for that is roughly, it's about $2 uh, a carton. 
And that means however many books we can get into that carton. So if you're doing the one-off book, it'll just be $2 into that carton. If you're doing um, in, uh, multiples, it drops down. It's, it's $1.60 for the carton, and that's $0.40 cents for every additional book after that. That's how they, they, they price it out um, if you're doing uh, multiples through that as well. And that's okay. all encompassed within the, um, the fulfillment pricing structure that, that I can send you to uh, or anyone if they want to see it, along with the warehousing of the books if you want. You can do that in Will I Was Warehouse. It. You can do it all a cart and just have us do the straight fulfillment for you too as well. It's up to you guys how you guys want to handle that, that piece of it. Do, do you foresee at some point being able to offer small publishers like myself the ability to take orders off my website and go directly to your, to your system. We, you know, we get that, we asked that a lot and we are, we're working on that. Um, that it's, it's a, it's a lot of, uh, what we're trying to do is come up with a uh, specific setup as far as the, the protocols for everybody to have to kind of follow. I know sure. when you go to Amazon or those guys, they, they kind of make you do the same thing. We're trying to kind of go into that same realm too. Uh, Cause you have so many people using different methods for their, for their websites and their linking. Um, so we're trying to work on that now. That'll probably, something like that will probably happen, I'm going to say by the summer of next year. Uh, I know it's a little ways out from now, uh, only because we're just uh, finishing up a couple new things we did this year. Um, we just recently uh, purchased a UK-based uh, warehouse and, and printing company. And we did that probably the spring, springtime March of this year. So what that gave us the capability of doing is we can actually do fulfillment now for, for your, your groups in, in the UK or the, in Europe. And we actually have a print facility over there that handles all the same uh, capabilities we have here. They have, you know, they're all digital, digital print facility has the same kind of printers as we have here. So if you had a need to do a book of five copies, one copy, if you will, in the UK or, or in Europe, we can produce that book over there for you now and then ship it, ship it directly from there too as well. So we had to get that coding done and we wanted to make sure we had all that, uh, all those things in place first this year before we started going into the next phases of what we're mm -hmm. looking at. I know the thing you asked for is, is been asked for us a lot. How do we link to your website so somebody can just place an order and then just, we, we just get the order directly. So we're trying to work on that now and trying to figure out the best way to handle that. Okay, great. I look forward to that actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I think a lot of people are. They love to want to yeah. see that, that function. Yeah, um, I, I look forward to it all. Yeah. yeah. Um, any other questions on the manufacturing side that anybody wants to kind of know about? I know we cut, we kind of cover a lot of gamuts. Um, we, we try to, we try to make sure we do that for a couple of different reasons. Um, we have so many different publishers that have so many different types of books. That's why we kind of leave our, our trim sizes kind of open. We leave it with that, the small size to the full size. So you don't have to feel restricted. Um, same thing with our papers. You know, we offer many different versions of cream and opaques and whites, uh, and for that reason. So you guys could have that, that, that need. We do focus a lot heavily on half tones, even though you might not be doing half tones currently. But if you do have illustrations into your in your books, um, that's one of our our top things we do. We do a lot of that work. Uh, I think that's what grew, uh, grabbed John when we told him we work with the Getty. Uh, so we do a lot of the Getty's uh, monthly books. So we'll print those too as well. So that's that's kind of where we stand. So everything we focus on is being at that level of quality. So when you go down to just text only, we definitely can handle a lot of that. Um, a lot of that printing, it's a lot, a lot simpler for us to handle. Um, beyond the printing side of it, so in, in the warehousing fulfillment side you saw, so we have a, a division of our company called First Right. So First Right is kind of more of a, a group that helps and assists uh, publishers or independent publishers, if you will. And I don't personally run that piece of the business, but if this interests you, let me know and I can get you in contact with my counterpart who does that. So what First Right does is they, they handle all of the uh, file setup so they can do all the uh, page comp editorial design work that you need. We can do that through our facility. Um, we've actually got a nice uh, group of people that do that uh, over all these years with everybody consolidating and publishers, you know, laying off people. We've kind of got a group, a nice group of people from all these different publishing houses that have been in the business for over 30 years um, that, that really know um, design and in, in page comp and editorial. And they work for our group and they actually do all this work and, and kind of, we're kind of scattered all over the United States. And they're able to kind of put all these books together for us. The beauty of using them is once you get the book from us, whether you're getting electronic uh, proofs to see or you're asking for a, a what they call blue lines or a hard proof, we're actually going to print those proofs. And we do this for your regular books too, off the machine that we're going to print on. So you're going to, the quality of what you see when you get a proof from us is the actual output you're going to get, even, even when you do the page copy and editorial. So you guys will be able to see that, do those books and be able to handle that, um, 
that process uh, and then be able to kind of push it through. It also knocks a week off the schedule by doing that because once you've done a book with us through page combinatorial and you approve it, we essentially handle it like a reprint. So it goes through our plan a lot quicker too as well. Um, the other thing we, we, we will do there is that's the, the marketing and the sales side. I think, I think someone had asked about that. Um, I can't uh, go into a lot of detail there because that's not my, uh, my background. I'm more manufacturing, um, but Bill will be more than happy to talk to you. That's my counterpart. Uh, talk to you guys about that and how our group can work with Amazon for you or with you. Um, he can talk to you about how they can work with uh, Ingram too as well and some of the others. Uh, his group also handles all the ebook and ebook conversions too. So if you need it, need an ebook or looking towards doing ebook, we can do that. They actually do that as a, as a package deal if you like too. So when we're doing the uh, page count editorial for doing that, they can create the ebook along with it. The ebook usually finishes a lot quicker than the, the hard copy does. So we'll do the, the, the book, we'll create the ebook. The ebook's usually ready within like five days after we do a page count editorial. And then they'll kind of give that off to you. Our group will then move on to the, uh, the manufacturing side after that. So it's kind of a nice uh, kind of joint thing you can get when you're using that portion of it too as well. Uh, so as far as all the different options we, we, we offer, um, that's kind of a, in a nutshell, everything that we have. Um, I'm, I'm open to having you guys, if any, any questions or anything you're looking to do that I can maybe hear and I can see maybe I can help you guys out or at least take some information down and I can look into how we can maybe assist you guys because you're the ones that really need your product uh, created and produced. Um, my group does, does that and puts it all together for you, uh, but we can handle a couple different ends for you, help you on the upfront part of it, getting it ready. And then we can help you also uh, get the, 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 the shipment out to the end user for you too as well. Um, so I'm not sure how we could potentially help you. I got, I got two questions for you. Sure. One is, can you do paperbacks with flaps on it? Yes, we also can do that. Yeah. So as it, we call that the, the, the additionals, if you will. So we can do paperbacks with flaps. Uh, I'm not sure if I have one of those on me right now currently. I do not. Um, but we do, because we can do jackets, obviously we can do, I'll show you a book here. So we can do the flap just like we would a jacket. So we can print the covers just okay. like that. So we have a 40 inch, the 40 inch press will handle that and do all that. We also offer mechanical binding too. I'm not sure if your group has a need for that. So that means we can do spiral bind, YRO, saddle stitching, three hole drilling. Uh, because of the variable data process that we offer, we've done a lot of um, educational books that have um, your uh, access codes with, with scratch offs. So we can print those and create those two for you as well. And we've, we've done those either either a printed onto the book or done on a card, which gets added to the, the book to as well as well. So we, we have that. So uh, one other question that my group of, of authors is concerned with, is there a way cost efficiently to do a box set of paperbacks for, on a print on demand situation? Wow, so you actually want it in a custom box too as well? Doesn't necessarily have to be in a custom box. Okay. It just means we want to be able to sell as a box set. So, so we're telling someone that they can get three paperbacks at okay. once um, at, a, at a lower price than if they were buying them separately. Okay. Is that something that could be arranged with you guys? Yes, and it would absolutely. Be one, yeah. It would be one-offs because, you know, we wouldn't, I don't know any other way of doing it. Yeah, we, well, for us, we would handle it as uh, one unique order. So you, you would say to us, we would, we would set up our portal. So we have a portal system um, that we would set up for you guys and each individual person can have one or we can set up one master one, if you will, um, however you'd like to set that up. You go onto the portal and we would upload all your, the files that were being there. So they'd be set up in that system. You could then go into the portal. Let's say you had, it doesn't have to actually be a box that was a volume. Let's say you want to, you have different um, book types. This one's about birding. You have two other books about birding by somebody else. You want to kind of put together as a set. Um, you could go and pick those three books and say, I want those to be shipped together as a box set. Um, we would then pr pr process that as one order, produce that, and then we would put it in one carton. Just like I said to you before, so we would have that carton charge of, of $1.60 for that carton, and we would charge you 40 cents and another 40 cents. So you'd pay basically $2.40 for that carton, and it had all your books in it. And that's how we would ship it out to the end user for you. Okay, that's something I'm gonna have to look into. A little I had a question about the flaps, um, dust jackets and stuff. I Last time I priced this out, they were just like super expensive. And I'm wondering what that would add to like per copy to a book. Having a dust jacket? Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, depending on the quantity you're doing, are you doing just one copy or are you gonna do? No, it would be, you know, I don't know, small run probably, you know. 50, 100 probably? Yeah, I was, I was gonna say two to 500. Oh, well, well two to 500. So take this book, for example, right here, right? Yeah. The, if we printed this with a, um, a four color cover, the, the upcharge to go to, to the printed foil with the jacket, right? Was 25 cents for the printed foil in about 65 cents for the uh, for the jacket okay. to, to the unit. So um, I, if you want to send me the specs for just a mm -hmm. hypothetical job, I'll do that mm -hmm. for you. I'll even show you 200 to 500 quantity range. So you can see that, yeah. that that's a nice range. You get for price break wise, you can see it, yeah. but also put the one off cost too, just so you okay. can see it. So that yeah. you know but, when the book moves down, we can do that. Okay, so what if you have a case, uh, a printed case, and then you wanted a jacket on a printed case? So that uh, that you would only be paying that sixty five cent upcharge for the, okay. for the for the jacket, yeah, that's all. And that, that includes it's a lot time. less than what I had quoted before. It, sorry, it was what now? It sorry. was a, it's a lot less than what oh, I had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that, that that meteor press. You know everything. We've done a couple of different things. We we, we could have bought an inkjet press five years ago, like everybody else did, the big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, but the but the quality wasn't there. We we had to have that twelve hundred DPI or higher output. Beyond the quality, though, it had to be the price point. You know, we had to make it you know, cost competitive, and that's our goal. I mean, are we the cheapest ones out there? I don't think. I don't know. Maybe I hope. Um, but at the end of the day, we don't. We want to give you the best book more than just cheapest price. Um, so yeah, we definitely could do that for you. I can quote that for you to show you that okay. that pricing. We'd be more than happy to do that. Um, and do you have any marketing services in, you know, your? Yeah, you know? we, we we definitely do on the on the ebook side. Um, uh, that's again that that's. I'm more the manufacturing person, but mm -hmm. like I said, if you want to send me your, your email address, I'll get you in touch with Bill and he could definitely call yeah. and talk to you. He definitely could go, he, he'd be the better one to talk to you that. Cause if you need sure. marketing okay. or, or sales or to help you with your books, he can definitely do that for you. Cool. Um, something that somebody always asks me about is too, is the, uh, the, the turnaround time. So it kind of breaks into two different sections. Just so you kind of know. So once a job is established, it's in our, it's in our library and you can place orders against it. Um, Paperback and case bound books roughly are about three to five days, depending on the, the, bind, the binding, um, just so you kind of know that. And then on the core side, this is you needing to get a proof, you know, or, or uh, approve something as well. It's roughly right now, because it's a little bit busier, uh, we're roughly about 10 to 15 days um, because of the uh, because of the season we're in right now. On um, what side is that? Uh, the core. So the, the run you were just talking about, do, doing a book oh. like this, a 200, 300 run. Yeah, we're about 10 to 15 days. Okay, so, yeah. You know. Just so you can see, kind of know. I just want to see if anybody else had any other. Questions. Yeah, Tim. Um, yes. uh, how difficult is it to make some minor changes to the book in between print runs? That was exactly what I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah. Well, depending on the minor change, um, if you call this up and say, "I just want to change the 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 the, uh, the print line and make it make it three versus the versus two. Um, that that's a second and it's a like a two dollar and seventy five cent change. Um, if you want us to replace pages in it, uh, that that could be two different ways. Um, we can charge you. We charge like an hourly rate for that, uh, depending on how extensive it is. We charge roughly about seventy five dollars an hour. Um, we'll we're up front with you. We say, hey, this is gonna take us ten minutes. You know, what I mean, they'll just tell you know they'll just prorate it down for the ten minutes. Um, mm -hmm. But we can just go through and change the file. We always suggest we, we send you a soft proof after we do that, just to make sure that everything's been changed accurately and correctly the way you're looking for. Um, or you can always upload a new file. That's a twenty five dollar charge. Some people like to do it themselves and just do the, just do it and then just upload it for twenty five dollars because they, they weigh the, the cost themselves and see which one makes more sense. And then do you fulfill it automatically to Amazon? I might have missed that, but. Like, yeah, well, if you if you're telling us to ship it to Amazon, like in your in your profile for your for your order, it'll go on it'll go on the Amazon truck. It'll it'll go on that truck. So you don't lose. It's not like Ingram where they just like take care of the whole thing for you. Is it? Would I have to be an Amazon seller? Uh, yes. Yes, I can answer that. Yes, you okay. have to have a seller's account, sorry. Okay. And that's where I think where Bill can help you with the first right side because he has that um, the seller account and everything would just actually just filter through first right. And you, you, we would do all your, we process all your orders through them, and then we just, he would handle everything for you. So if you're looking for somebody to do all that for you, that's right. what Bill can do. He can handle all right. that. But Tim, that's only for eBooks. That's not for print, right? With Bill. Print too. Yeah, he can oh, do all. Print the, too. Yeah, he can do print, print too. Yeah. Too. If you want to use First Right for all the all the print side, he can handle that too as well. Can he put up his? Uh, uh, can he put up my page on Amazon and then handle uh, uh, selling through that? 
that would be a good question for him. Like I, I can ask him that. Uh, what I'll do, John, is I think he has your information. I'll have him get a hold of you, and then you, can ask, you guys can talk okay. about that. You can Thank go through that, those, those extra details. Absolutely. So um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, was there any other questions in the chat? I wasn't sure. Uh, I didn't see any. Okay. Um, but if anybody has any more questions, we got roughly five minutes before I. We where are you finish. located, Tim? So our, our plant is located in Dulles, Virginia. That's where the main the main plant is. Okay. Um, and the uh, we have a small little version of our plant, actually kind of like the size of what I created here. Yeah. In Chicago, uh, in our Chicago distribution center, we have one there too as well. And then in Biggleswad, uh, the UK, that's where we have okay. our uh, our UK plant. Biggleswad. Yeah. Biggleswad. Yeah, it's it's about. Hey. Uh, I tell everybody it's about an hour outside of, of Oxford. So if you know where Oxford is, the uh, hour outside of Littleswad. <laughs> yeah, everybody. My kids love that name, Biggleswad. That sounds Biggleswad. like a fun game. That sounds like a great game to play. You know? Those English people. Yeah, they got their their unique. Uh. Um, well, this is yeah. great. I really appreciate the Yeah, and like I said, I'm glad, Eddie, you're glad you got a chance to record this too, so you can you know show whoever you need to cool. show. Um, you guys have my email. If you want, you need any more information, let me know. If you want to see samples of something, just shoot me an email with your address. I can I can send those off. What's to your you. email Tim, address? Tim, Tim, yeah. can you put your email in the chat? Yeah, I'll do that right now. <clears throat> yeah. I just love touring printing plants. Yeah, we, we tried our best because we we had a lot of people that we were supposed to do tours for, you know, this year. And then when the whole yeah, yeah COVID right, thing, right. really really affected everything. So well, they asked me, what do you think we should do? I go, can you guys just videotape our, our plant? And they said, we want to see. And I, that's what they did for me. And I said, this way, at least I can yeah. I can then go through and just, uh, you know, talk people through it versus a narrator. Because if you guys had questions, I'd like to be able to kind of. Well, I worked at a a print or a paper in Seattle and the printer printing machine was in the basement it was in the 80s right and man it was i just i just love the smell and everything <laughs> yeah you know I, I worked in an offset shop and i worked at a digital shop and uh you know digital shop doesn't have that same smell obviously because there's no, no ink, right and, and it's not dirty like you know when you know it's i used it's, to mix ink uh for for presses four color presses and that was my job every day eight yeah. hours a day i'd mix ink for these guys all day long you know i had the apron that's just covered in ink um there it's just popping these canisters and that's it. And there's something Quiet. like really hypnotic about seeing the paper just, come, you know, like the printing come off the roof. Yeah. Hey, Tim. It's just um, crazy. I just thought of something you, you brought in earlier and so I don't know if everybody knows what PPI stands for. Can you describe oh, what oh, PPI sorry, stands yeah. for? PPI is pages per inch, just uh -huh. so you guys know. So that's how thick that your, your book can be and how many oh, pages we're gonna get. Yeah, so we have a lot of different uh, PPIs uh, for that reason. Um, having problems. Sending uh, my what is, what is your uh, email address? I'll put it. I'm in. trying to send it. It's uh, T Nick, so it's T K N I C K at books plural B O O K S I N T L dot com. Cool, it's not, it's not giving the, op the option to send it, Eddie, for some reason. That's all right. Uh, she's got it. Yeah, show, I got it. show yeah. is better than there. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. So I thank you guys for giving me this, this opportunity, this time to, to do this. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Hope you guys have a great conference too, as far as everything you guys are going to look at and see and talk about. But after you hear everything that everybody talks about this weekend, um, if anything sparks in your minds, like, you know, what, what can we can do here? Just give me a call and uh, we can, I definitely would love to do a call. Is John Meyer the one that got a hold of you or? Yeah, actually, actually yeah. Eddie did. I've known Eddie yeah. for quite a while, actually. Oh, um, I know him coming on 20 years, probably. 20, yeah. 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> and wow. uh, I, I kind of cut my teeth on uh, digital printing. Actually, like I said, I came from Offset, and then I, I joined I joined, joined digital printing right right when it was starting. So right when the Xerox was just taking these yeah. machines here. Yeah. And so I kind of learned a lot from that time frame. And then I worked with Eddie a couple yeah. different places. And then when he came up, you know, we moved here to this this facility here. Eddie was like, you know what? Talk. I like you to talk to my to my group. There's a lot of things you can offer here. He thinks that might have value outside of what you're currently using now. Um, we do offer quite a bit of stuff. So fantastic. And I, well, thank and I you thought, so much. I thought today would be a good, you know, for those who aren't in the industry as far as I have been, I always thought that showing them the machines is a kind mm -hmm. of cool thing. You yeah. Know, it gives Just you a whole nother perspective. Like how you can rack up so many jobs in a day on one.
computer yeah. is yeah. pretty it's cool. it's incredible it's incredible yeah. you know and then the size you know i'm used to sheet bed machines from the beginning they're so small those architects about the size of a dresser you know mm -hmm. uh, you're yeah. like oh wow it, and now it take it take it three and a half minutes to walk one it, it's just so they're so long you know but that's that's the beauty of it and our, our company's actually set because they, they always purchase everything beforehand so like we have about three and a half to four months worth of paper and inventory mm -hmm. on our floor at any given time. And mm -hmm. then we, we, we keep adding to it so we don't ever run out of stock. Same thing with the equipment. We buy the equipment before we need it and we just keep upgrading. So we're never waiting for the next What's piece of equipment. What's the paper market in? like now? Is is it pretty got, fluid? Yeah, it's starting, it's starting to die out. Oh, do we uh, gotta go, we, Eddie? Yeah, we gotta go. Cause okay. our next- It was great our seeing everybody. Thank you here, so much. So. Like, Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, bye. Uh...